Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. Here I am for a Scorpions ranking video. Today we are going to take a look at all 19 studio albums from the German legends, hard rock, metal, um, you know, touching on metal, like I've said before several times. Back in the day it was just all metal to me. It didn't matter, no categories, things like that, but yeah, definitely, um, <clears throat> excuse me, leaning on some hard rock here. So this is a, one of those discographies that's, you know, up there. Like I said, 19 studio albums. Finally getting to this one. Um, still got to get to Black Sabbath uh, for sure. We'll put that one on the list and other ranking videos. I do enjoy doing these. Um, you know, you guys get to have a look at uh, what I like and uh, definitely read your comments in the comment section of what you like or... Um, by all means, if you have a channel, uh, you know, throw it in the comments. Hey, I've done that ranking video. I've, I do these kind of videos. Please, uh, we're all in it together. So uh, feel free to uh, fire it down there so other people can see it. Uh, before we get rolling on this uh, ranking video, a couple little Scorpions related, uh, we'll call them housekeeping duties. We'll get those out of the way. But if any of you are interested in, in, some, in some vinyl reissues, None other than BMG, they seem to uh, reissue everything lately. There is a uh, several rele releases coming out on May 5th. I think it's, it's entitled Colors of Rock. It's all Scorpions albums. Uh, various different colors. I won't name the colors, but I will name the albums that are getting reissued. Uh, Fly to the Rainbow, In Trance, Virgin Killers, Taken by Force, with that original cool cover. Um, Tokyo Tapes, which I'm going to mention right now. If you have not heard Tokyo Tapes for some strange, re strange reason, maybe you're not a live um, album type of person, but this is one, this is one of those albums where, um, you know, from the debut to the album Taken by Force, and I'll throw in their last two feature, Yuli uh, John Roth. These are what this is one of those live albums where those songs are just better than the studio albums in my opinion so definitely check out tokyo tapes uh, next up in that list was is love drive animal magnetism blackout uh, love at first sting and another fantastic reissue that's going to be coming out worldwide live i forget what color that one is it might be red but look it up very cool and uh last two that they're going to reissue is savage amusement and uh, I think possibly the first time on vinyl, Humanity Hour 1. <clears throat> so again, uh, May 5th, 12 albums from the Scorpions, all these various different colors. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I have a couple to show you in this ranking video. I have tons of cassettes. I actually should have pulled out some of these cassettes, but for the majority of this ranking video, we're going to use CDs, and I do have a couple on vinyl. So anyways, I'm on the fence with... Uh, you know, I might throw it out there for, you know, things like Father's Day or Christmas gifts, stuff like that, that the family could, you know, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be mad if one of those came through the door, put it that way. So let's get on to this 19 studio album ranking. I'm not going to lie to you. This is not where I say this band has never made a bad album because that would be lying. Uh, degree of badness or uh, shitness, whatever you want to say, uh, that's up to you too. But there, like I say, there's always one or two songs that I can pick off of an album, but for the majority of this ranking, I would say I could easily cut this discography into half and live with, you know, that top half for, you know, for the rest of my life type of thing. Um, why do I hang on to some of these? Ah, you know, the uh, completest in me, whatever. So let's start off with number 19, 14th overall studio album. Um from, did I say 1999? 1999, should be no surprise, but that is eye to eye. There is uh, Matthias, uh, Rudy, and Close on the cover, and, uh, you know, which they are the focal point of the band, especially in this era of the band, because uh, you have James and um, Ralph on the back, bass player, you got your bass player and drummer there in the bottom end. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about this album. This is an um, pop rock they really tried something, did not work. Uh, I, I don't know if I could even name a track. If, if you want to get the gist of this album, go check out the track to be number one. Uh, very soft, experimental album, just not a good album. 
Um, number 19, eye to eye. And this one, number 18, 13th overall studio, 1996. This actually has one of my favorite Scorpion songs, but then it kind of just drops off. Like, um, we'll hold it up. Also featured this one on a video that I, uh, I did a thread response to a video called 10 Terrible Albums That Weren't Sane Anger. And I featured this one and I got a lot of comments saying, well, eye to eye is worse. And I said, yes, it is. But you know, I just didn't want to state the obvious in that video. I, I threw, and terrible, maybe was a strong word for that video, but more or less, you know, substandard albums from a band, you know, they that didn't come close to their peak. <clears throat> but anyways, and people are super sensitive. But anyways, on to this album, Pure Instinct, coming in at number 18. The lead-off track, uh, Wild Child, uh, love that track. And uh, I would say maybe Stone In My Shoe is not a bad, uh, bad track also. But this is where this album is very, uh, you know, ballad, heavy, soft, slow. You know, Scorpions are famous for those uh, type of songs, but just better than what's on here. So there is Pure Instinct at number 18. Number 19. Uh, I've seen this one a little higher in rankings, but this, put it put it this way, this this is just not the Scorpions I'm looking for, this one. Uh, but coming in at number 17, 2007's Humanity Hour 1, which I mentioned there earlier, this one's getting a vinyl reissue. So, you know, if you're one of those hardcore uh, Scorpions fans, definitely pick this up. Uh, they didn't have their traditional logo. I don't like when they mess with that. Um... <clears throat> and that usually sometimes, honestly, spells doom to me. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Maybe you know what I mean. But uh, Desmond Child uh, co-produced with, uh, uh, what's his name? James Michael. Um, sorry, itchy nose. Um, James Michael, if you know the band 6AM, which I really, I know of them, but I am, uh, I don't know their music, but James Michael was the lead singer uh, of 6AM or still is for all I know. But he co-produced this and probably helped write some of these songs. A couple tracks that do kind of stick out to me that I did that do really like. Um, Humanity, I guess that would be the title track. Um, and where is that other one? Uh, the Game of Life. Uh, that would be probably the uh, lead in after hour one and then into, uh, into the song Game of Life. So... Yeah, I'm glad to see there isn't an hour to put it that way, but uh, some people like this album, but it's just not, like I said, just not what I'm looking for when I want to, you know, put on some Scorpion. So 16th overall studio album, coming in at number 17, uh, Humanity Hour 1. We'll move on to, well, <clears throat> one second here. We got three in a row from, you know, their later work, but here's number 16. This is Return to Forever, their 18th studio album. Um, you know, not, not the best covers on some of these, but they're I guess they're definitely consistent. Um, this one, or this version, I don't know if all the versions include all these bonus tracks, but this is just one of those albums where if you included all 19 of these tracks and just mixed them up for me, I would probably hardly notice, but I do notice that there's the couple songs that really stick out to me. Uh, going out with a bang, which would indicate, you know, hey, we're retiring, but that didn't happen. Um, we built this house, rock my car. Great, you know, you, you got a lot of those great Rudy, uh, Rudy riffs on here, um, and you have that, I guess, element of corniness with some of the lyrics or song titles, which you know that happens with every band. But anyways, there's my number sixteen. <clears throat> Uh, Return to Forever, coming in at number 15, 15, their 17th studio album from 2010 called Sting, yeah, Sting in the Tail. Um, you know, it's very similar cover to Return for uh, Return to Forever, but this one is just a little notch up for me uh, compared to Return Forever, uh, Return to Forever. Raised on Rock, great track, Sting in the Tail, and. Um, there's a couple of those kind of ballads on here, like the song called Lorelei or Lorelei um, or Sly. Um, yeah, just, I would say, you know, 
not a crap album, but just kind of just like this one even pace with a couple of good tracks, but nothing that just, you know, blows you away. So, all right. So that is number 15, number 14, 15th overall studio album from 2004. So 2004. So this is five years after, uh, took him five years basically to recover from eye to eye. So maybe, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, that was around 99 when I die. Maybe they thought the world was going to end and who cares what we put out. But the world didn't end. And here they came out with Unbreakable. Um, kind of a cool cover, kind of a carving uh, style uh, uh, scorpion in there with their, of course, their classic logo, which I absolutely love. So um, this one, a little darker, I'd say. Um, and uh, what was I going to tell you? tracks to check out new generation actually there is a track on here called deep and dark uh borderline i don't mind that one at all and my city my town um, but again this one would be similar to sting in the tail i just put it up just a, a a little bit higher not by much very similar albums those three that i just showed you well those two and this one that i'm including just kind of that you know solid album but just nothing really you know jumping out at you type of thing so all right let's continue <clears throat> this one you might have saw this one or you might have expected this one to be a lot lower in my ranking but you know what it, it, it as they say it is what it is and it, it was the start of something uh, way back in 1972 this band actually formed in 1965 you know three years before I was even born but Here's Lonesome Crow coming in at number 13, uh, their first album. This one features, it has Klaus and Rudy and a very, very young Michael Schenker. Uh, <clears throat> tracks to check out. Um, I would say, you know, I'll mention before I tell you the tracks to check out. This one is, uh, you know, I don't know if they consider this that kraut rock type of thing, a little psychedelic type of uh atmosphere i don't really know but i don't really mind it <clears throat> excuse me my throat's cracking up <clears throat> um i'm going mad that's a lead off track and like i said in the search of peace of mind which uh michael shanker actually covered that one on one of his newer studio albums you'll have to check that out but there is my number 13 all right and right in the ballpark number 12 Coming in at number 12, their second studio album, Fly to the Rainbow. This one has one of my favorite Scorpion tracks on it for sure, which is called Speedy's Coming. This one is the first to feature uh, Yuli John Roth and long-serving bass player for, uh, Francis Buckholtz, which to me is, Francis is, is definitely part of that classic, uh, you know, classic Scorpions lineup, which we'll talk about here shortly. Um, but yeah, great album. Really, it is a great album overall. It is a step up from <clears throat> Lonesome Crow, but they haven't quite found their sound here yet. And, uh, you know, we'll get to that here shortly. Also, check out the track, Flight of the Rainbow. <clears throat> All right. Coming in at number 11. And last of first feature, classic member, member Herman Rarebell on drums, but this is Face the Heat. <clears throat> not a bad album what year did this one come out i forget 1993 uh produced by bruce fairbairn um which you know yeah the, actually i'm going to mention a, a couple of producers that they used here for some of these 90s albums they kind of you know you know they got away from uh spending time with so much time with dieter dirks but <clears throat> alien nation definitely great lead off track check that one out uh under the same sun that was a hit for them also um and a deep track that I really enjoy. It's called Hate to Be Nice. One of those classic Rudy riffs. Um, and as you'll, uh, we'll mention it here again a couple of times, but you got a lot of Scorpion songs lead off with that uh, great riff and, and some, a couple of, uh, you know, lead overdubs coming in, you know, like Rocky, like a hurricane. You got that great riff with the and then a second one of those coming in and then the build up and then boom uh, but we'll talk about rocky like a hurricane here shortly there it is number 11 <clears throat> face the heat from 93 and that brings us to ah actually <clears throat> their newest album 
This one, <clears throat> yeah, and sorry about my throat, a little bit touch under the weather, but uh, we'll get over that. When I first heard Peacemaker, the song, the, the lead-off single for the new album, Rock Believer, 19th overall studio album, 2022, you know all about it. I don't know, I had a, just kind of mixed feelings. That The bass was super prominent in that song, and it sounded, I don't know, just almost too newish, um, <clears throat> if I'm saying that, you know, if, if you know what I mean. But actually, that song really grew on me, and this album grew on me, to whereas I, you know what, I had to put it at number 10 in my ranking. Here is Rock Believer, like I said, 2022's Rock Believer. Uh, gas in the Tank, lead off track, you know, classic Scorpions. Um, there's a lyric in there, it goes, uh, um, black me in, black me out. The riff master, uh, or the, the, not the riff master, the king of riffs is back in town, which, you know, some lyrics pertaining to Rudy and uh, black me in, black me out. So there's definitely some blackout vibes on here, but I wouldn't say it's like drenched in them by any means. Uh, tracks that I rock believer the title track is is just a it's a feel-good song it really is it's a celebration that's what I think it is um, Seventh Son that one you would oh man you'd even feel like um, way back to Taken by Force type of stuff pretty cool and um, what else oh and, and again I'll mention on Peacemaker 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 Barry the Undertaker, what a line, top notch. Number 10, there we go. All right, we're just plugging away here. Um, coming in at number nine, fourth overall studio album, 1976, Virgin Killer, which is getting a reissue too. So I don't know, I may have to pick this one up on, on vinyl. This is, uh, and I had mentioned earlier in the video, the kind of the cutoff point, if, you know, if I had to, I, I might have to include... I'd have to go one to 10 for, uh, you know, really keepers for me. But here it is, 1976, Virgin Killer. This one could be higher, but I just feel there's the the good songs on here are fantastic. And then there's a little bit of, uh, I wouldn't say filler, but just stuff that just doesn't jump out at me. Uh, and I'm not the biggest uh, Yuli John Roth uh, vocal fan. Uh, Definitely adds a different twist and element to this band, but uh, Pictured Life, great track, Catch Your Train, uh, which actually Pictured Life and Backstage Queen is featured on Tokyo Tape, so definitely check that out. And another track to check out here would be Polar Nights, and uh, produced by Dieter Dirks, which you're all, a lot of the earlier work, and this band right here, uh, I'm actually spinning some Accept, uh, one of the greatest live albums ever made, Staying Alive, from the Metal Heart Tour. If you have not checked that one out, and actually, uh, there's an Accept member who makes an appearance on the next album that I'm going to show you. Might not be the, the the guy you're thinking of, but we'll talk about that soon. But there is my number nine, Virgin Killer. And of course, we got that classic logo. I love their logo. And, uh, you know, I just, like I said, you go back to that when they change things up just you know keep it the same but anyways um coming in at number eight their 10th overall studio album from 1988 and my second new release this is savage amusement yeah i know the uh a little bit of the the whatever the program drums things like that that's pretty much right in 88's you know, you look at uh, an album like uh, Judas Priest, Ram It Down, same, same shit. But there is some real drums on here. At least I think there is anyways. But uh, I was mentioning there's a guy uh, from Accept on here. Actually, it's bass, a former bass player, Peter Baltes. He appears on the uh, lead-in on uh, the lead-in vocals on Every Minute, Every Day, which is a fantastic song. But um, which I do love on the second half of this album. But the first half of this album... It's just killer to me. I, I just never tire of it. Um, very polished. Lots of polish on here, but I don't mind. It's a, it's some good polish. Put it that way. Um, don't Stop at the Top. Rhythm of Love. Great riff. Passion Rules the Game. Another great one. And uh, I really do... My deep track that I do enjoy on here is called Media Overkill. Don't mind it a bit. 
This one was produced, yeah, still, I think this is uh, the last to be produced by Dieter Dirks. If I'm not mistaken, then they moved on. We'll talk about that here shortly. Also, some backing vocals from a Canadian, if you know Lee Aaron, the Metal Queen, uh, my favorite album from Lee Aaron. She does some backing vocals on, uh, I forget which song. I think it's uh, Rhythm of Love, actually. So, yeah, check this one out if you have not, or I'm sure you have if you're a Scorpions fan. There's my number eight. Number seven, this one, I put it a little higher than Savage Amusement just because the, the the production is, is very good on this album, which I didn't mention. Uh, the production on uh, Rock Believer, it's just perfect. It's not... You know what? And Klaus, I'm going to tell you, because I, if I forget to say this, I'll kick my own ass. Klaus's vocals are absolutely amazing at his age. I will tell you that for free. Uh, and I uh, I love his, the German accent coming out in his English spoken vocals. If I'm explaining that, the German-ness, whatever. Love it. Always have, always will. But here we go. Number seven. Coming in at number seven, the 11th overall studio album, Crazy World. Last to feature, uh, bass player Francis Buckholtz, the, uh, one of the classic lineup, as I would say, along with uh, Herman and Rudy, um, Matthias and Klaus. But this one produced by Keith Olsen. So yeah, some of those big names came in. This was what, 19, what did I say, 1990? Yeah, Tease Me, Please Me, great lead off track you know scorpions are typical of that nice opening track and some and on probably four or five of these at least or six albums they end with a ballad which is you know unusual but it fits the scorpions put it that way um of course the massive massive hit wind of change uh kicks after six i like that one too and then we had another hit with send me an angel which wraps up this album there we go. Number seven, uh, Crazy World. Coming in at number six, our, and their seventh overall studio album, 1980s. Uh, Animal Magnetism, you know, one of those unusual uh, Scorpions covers, but man, they just, just gives these albums character as far as I'm concerned. This overall, I really love this album throughout the whole thing. Uh, you know, when I say you got this line way here, this is one of those where the line's way up here, but there's so many good tracks on here. Make it real. Uh, don't make no promises. Good track. Uh, Lady Starlight, Falling in Love. Great track. And uh, my favorite track and one of my favorite Scorpions tracks, definitely The Zoo. And uh, this one wraps up with not a ballad actually, but Animal Magnetism. Produced by Dieter Dirks. Um, and this was the first album to just have Matthias by himself, uh, whereas uh, Love Drive, which we'll talk about uh, soon, um, had some Michael Shanker on it. But anyways, there is my number six. Coming in at number five, and uh, one of my favorite uh, Scorpions title tracks for sure, uh, In Trance, third overall studio album. They didn't, this isn't their big uh, North American breakthrough album, but in Japan, they really broke big in Japan. And, uh, you know, as we saw earlier with Tokyo Tapes, you know, the crowds were phenomenal, things like that. But uh, 1975's In Trance, like I said, I love the title track. Dark Lady, uh, do like that one. Top of the Bill, Robot Man, um, Sun in My Hand, no, not Sun in My Hand, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, Longing for a Fire, decent track too. Uh, overall, just a just a great album. This one's a darker on the darker side. You know, you have you know little tweaks and not tweaks, little uh, of that sound coming that is yet to come. I, I'm not explaining that very well, but uh, yeah, it's starting. Put it that way. All right, there's number four, or sorry, number five coming in at number four. Uh, is their sixth overall studio album and a a real lesson of uh, what not to do with gum because you can get it in your hair or actually this could happen too. Oh, but anyways, bad dad joke. Sorry about that. Love Drive coming in at number four. Like I said, sixth overall studio album. 
1979. First defeat, not to feature Yuli John Roth. So uh, into the picture comes Matthias Jabs, and there's some lead work also from Michael Shanker on this one. Uh, there's the back cover and tracks loving you on sunday morning great track another piece of meat uh, coast to coast another good one can't get enough that's quite actually a nice speedy track um, love drive the title track and holiday to end it um, you know these are right in the the years where their bands are putting out these you know 37 to you know 43 minute albums just the perfect length uh, classic scorpions logo um, yeah, number four, Love Drive, great album. And that brings us to number three and my first new release. I did not buy it on release day. I bought it in and around. Remember seeing uh, Rocky Like a Hurricane here on Canada's Much Music on the Pepsi Power Hour. And yeah, I was, I was hooked or I was stung, whatever. Uh, but here's my number three, ninth overall studio album, and the one to break them huge in North America. This is Love at First Sting. Uh, nine tracks. Really, there's not anything weak on this album whatsoever. It's just uh, starts off with uh, Bad Boys Running Wild. You know, um, you better stay out of their wee. Um, another bad dad joke. Anyways, um, and that's where I just... I really picked up on that that German uh, delivery, that that accent, um, and of course, Rocky Like a Hurricane. That honestly, whether I'm just listening to it or I'm at a sporting's event or something like that, I just never tire of that song. I just I don't know. Uh, I'm leaving you, coming home, same thrill. Big City Nights, another great track from this song, um, this album, and again, uh, ending the album, track nine is still loving you. Another, uh, you know, one of those signature Scorpion uh, rock ballads, whatever you want to call them, but just a fantastic album. And I put this on any time and just, like I said, not, not, not tire of it. But uh, uh, number, coming in at number two, eighth overall studio album. And I actually have this one on vinyl, so I should show you that one. They changed this one up a little bit, and I'll tell you what, actually here, I'll show you the CD first. Blackout, um, 1982. This is the one I immediately backtracked to after hearing Love at First Sting. Uh, I did not know any much about uh, the Scorpions at that time, but uh, the logo is white and it's white red here, whereas this 40th, uh, 50th reissue, 50th anniversary reissue, they changed the color, which I think, mm, I still like the white actually, but overall, love this cover. Very cool. Love this album. Top to bottom, this one is one of those flawless albums too. We got tracks like, um, yeah, Blackout, Can't Live Without You, uh, No One Like You, uh, but there it just goes deeper than that. The guitar tone on Dynamite and China White is just, that just sticks out to me. It's just awesome. It's like something I had never heard before um, exactly at the, at the time, but uh, yeah. Uh, Arizona, cool track too, when the smoke goes down. But yeah, China White, uh, Dynamite, No One Like You, Can't Live Without You, the title track. It's just, it goes on and on with this one. So there's my number two. Leaving only one. And this album, uh, you know what? Blackout easily probably could have been number one. But this is my number one, fifth overall studio album. Taken by Force. Uh, not my favorite cover. I like the original cover better than this one. I would probably like i said i might have to get that one on vinyl but this is where it all came together i think for their sound and their direction of where they were going still heavier than what they did uh after but that just that that yeah i don't know how to how else to describe it but this is the one where it all came together let's put it that way yeah uh, we got just killer tracks on here steam rock fever We'll Burn the Sky, The Riot of Your Time, absolutely love that song. Uh, the Sales of Caron, just, oh, that one is just definitely one of my all-time favorite Scorpion songs for sure. And then you got the uh, well-covered uh, He's a Woman, She's a Man. There's been so many bands that have covered that track too, but 
and this one is the last one to uh, feature Yuli on guitars and then they did that uh, Tokyo tapes and then in comes uh, Matthias and uh, the rest is history but great band I uh, didn't really realize how much I love some of these top albums um, you know until I started going through every one of them again and yeah you know not not the best uh, albums at the bottom but you know you can always find something good in something not so good let's put it that way but hope you enjoyed this one um, yeah amazing career still going and if you have not checked out rock believer yet uh, it's definitely made me a believer that uh, these guys still got some gas in the tank so and that is it for today and until next time stay heavy